I want to thank the channel Awesome for giving me some leads on this investigation to the video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to the bus house. If you are a OG subscriber, welcome back. And if you're just coming by because of the title of the video, I hope you consider subscribing before you go. I was terribly wrong. So I guess this is like my very first YouTuber's apology video. I want to apologize to Without a Crystal Ball, Better to Glare, Kate Blank, Liv. I try to be fair in my channel and I didn't want to speak out of ignorance so I made a couple of videos about this subject and in one of the videos I raised the question she was actually the staffers who were copyright claiming these channels. <sighs> How did I even think that the staffers had a ounce of dignity in them? It's beyond me. All of the copyright claims were coming up as Awesomeness TV as the owner of the copyright claim and I thought it was pretty sketchy. The craziest thing happened. What the hell is happening? The day before my latest video about the subject came out, the actual creator from Awesome Channel had commented on my video about the subject on content creators being copyright claimed. And it was surreal to me. I did not expect that this creator was going to watch my videos and actually comment on my video. This creator left me a link from Awesomeness TV, which is a video from 2013 where they teach you how to content ID your video so you can have their algorithm or their system scan the internet for any content that has your image in it. After I watched that video, I was like, who the hell is Awesome Miss TV? Because nobody has answered that question yet. Then I went to Google. Hey, what are you looking for? Awesomeness TV is considered an MCN. MCN is an acronym for multi-channel network. MCNs are not owned by YouTube. They are third-party organizations which might offer a variety of services to YouTube creators in exchange for a percentage of their earnings. The types of services an MCN my offer includes audience development, content programming, finding, collaborations, sales, and digital rights management. Most of the channels that I have found on YouTube about the subject are pretty old. Most of them are from 2013, as well as most of them are from gamers. Good morning, gamers! Here is what one of these creators posted about the pros and cons of being in a MCN at the time. Custom thumbnails, scheduled uploads, external annotations, I don't know what that means, clean your videos, and 70% revenue. The cons receive money after I reached a hundred dollars, two-year contract, and small network. YouTube didn't have scheduled uploads as well as making custom thumbnails back in 2013 probably was not the easiest thing. The whole YouTube platform was really difficult to navigate. You needed to have like coding skills to actually change your channel art and things like that. These MCNs kind of helped the creators out with that. Also, the gaming content was not very well received by YouTube back in the day. I think that that's why most gamers went for the MCNs. Prior to the policy change, affiliates of MCNs were given special privileges on YouTube, including freedom of content ID scans of their content and no monetization review process, meaning videos were available for monetization the moment they were uploaded. This was because MSNs signed agreements with YouTube to take direct responsibility for contents on its members' channels, and those agreements were part of the pitch MCNs gave affiliates in encouraging them to sign up and surrender a portion of their revenues. Some of the channels didn't even have any followers, didn't have any subscribers, didn't have much views, and they were signing all of them up in order to get that revenue from them. What's up with MCNs today? Huge YouTubers like Gabby Hanna, PewDiePie, the Stauffer family, they all had MCNs. And when I found the website for the MCN Awesomeness TV, I tried to join and apply for it to see what is the contract that they put out for these YouTubers look like. However, they do 
require you to be already monetized in order to take you in. Why would I want to relinquish the rights of my channel to another channel or another company if I'm already being monetized? There are two ways to join the MCN. One is an affiliate channel. Affiliate channels are managed at scale by their MCN and reside in a affiliate content owner. You are still the owner of the channel, you're just an affiliate, and then you have owned and operated. It's O-N-O. O-N-O channels are owned and operated by the MCN. This means the MCN has obtained the rights to the channel's YouTube content, assumes full liability for the content on YouTube, and manages the O-N-O channels on a day-to-day -day basis. So you basically gave your channel away to these people. They own all your content and they own everything in your channel. They can actually copyright you for your own content. So silly. What's that smell? Some bullshit? I'm gonna put it up. The pros today for MCNs. Collaborations. A network might help to set up collaborations between you and other channels in their network. They are extremely unlikely to get you a collab with the biggest channel in their network, but they could pave the way for you to work with other talent about the same size as you. Brand deals. A network can find and negotiate sponsorship opportunities for you. Access to resources. IMCN might be able to provide you with access to channel art, royalty-free music, and even studio space. Support with channel growth. From offline workshops and meetups to online articles and tutorial videos, there are a number of ways in which MSNs can help support the growth of your channel. They may even offer you individual support to develop your content and brand, but that is unlikely unless you are one of their larger channels. Overall, the main benefit of MCN is that they can take a lot of headache out of running a YouTube channel. Nowadays, all of these perks that they offer are silly. They are not talking about about the content ID, so I don't understand why there is no information on that. But let's keep going. So here are the cons. There are no real perks. You can do almost anything an MCN can all by yourself. You can reach out to other YouTubers for collaborations or find brand deals for yourself on FameBit. I never heard of FameBit, but there we go. You might not have the resources to negotiate better ads and CPM for yourself as a small YouTuber, but most MCNs don't put that kind of effort into the smaller channels anyways. You are just a number. The more members a MCN has, the less likely it is you are going to get any kind of individual attention or support. After signing, you may get a lot of attention from a salesperson. It is hard to leave. When you sign a contract with an MCN, you may be locked into a contract until it expires. Then, it might be automatically renewed if you don't act within the right window of time. Even if there is a way to exit an MCN before contract period is over, there may be penalties or obstacles. It just sounds like there is not much greatness to this. And if you ever get copyright claimed on your video, if you see one of these, it's probably because the creator has an MCN. The biggest ones are Awesomeness TV, Broadband TV, Full Screen, Makinima, Disney Digital Network, and Style Hall. Most of the stuff that I researched did not give me any information on what about the content ID? How does this work? You still have to have a thousand subscribers and you still have to have 4,000 hours of watch view just like a regular YouTube partner. So why would you want to have your channel handled by MSNs when most of the stuff can be done by yourself? Now that we know PewDiePie has an MCN and Gabby Hanna actually says that she has an MCN. If you get a copyright claim on my uh, YouTube video, it's because I have an MCN, Awesomeness TV. But Gabby Hanna and PewDiePie have MCNs. Obviously, I can't see why. PewDiePie was a gaming channel and MCNs were really popular with gaming channels back in the day. Gabby Hanna has been in for 15 years, so I'm pretty sure that when she came in, obviously she needed some help. Nowadays, they really don't. It's a numbers game right now. Why would the staffers get into IMCN? I have no idea. The only perk that looks like that's serving them at the moment is the content ID. They have a content ID in all of their videos, so people get copyright claimed in their behalf. 
by Awesomeness TV. Right, so this explained a lot, but very little. It really showed that if you ever get copyright claimed by something that's not literally the name of the creator, it does not mean that the creator did not copyright claim you. I was crazy about finding out who Awesomeness TV was and we got it. We found the information necessary to educate ourselves and actually, for sure, say with certainty that the Stoffel family actually are aware and actually started the whole deal of copyright claim these channels. They definitely have something to do with us. However, the question remains, and if you guys have any answers, please let me know because it was one of you guys who helped me to solve this mystery. What kind is the ones that they are doing the copyright content ID service? Is it the affiliates who still own their channel and their content? Or is it the own and operated ones where they just take the rights to the channel for themselves that's something that i still have so many questions about <laughs> let me know down below how it works because i was not able to find online any kind of contracts or examples or draft of contracts that people have done with the mcn before i am glad i have educated myself on this if you made this far in the video don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell button so you can get notified every time i post like this video if you want more content like this follow me on instagram and if you want to get a hold of me dm me on instagram i always love to talk to you guys i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i hope to see you guys in the next upload bye The video that he had posted on his channel has been taken down and copyright claimed. They are third party organizations which might offer a variety of sis. They are a 30 part organ. They are a third. You might not. The more members MCN has, the more members and the more members, <laughs> the more members a N. Anyway, with this, <laughs> my. Makinima, 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 makinima.